Pale, Pixel here from Improper Garage, and we're going to start talking about what I'm doing with the Cube. So, as you know, I bought this car as a spare car, winter driver, whatnot, but I, you know me, I can't leave anything alone. So this little guy is going to become a cyberpunk dystopian sort of city car. Basically, the idea behind this build is going to be somebody who in an alternate fu cyberpunk future bought a cheap car that they've needed to both keep going with whatever modifications they can make, have it survive in a really rough city, and modify it for their own potentially legal, potentially illegal means. So let's go somewhere a little quieter and I'll talk about the details. All right, I'm sure you're wondering what I mean by a dystopian future cyberpunk city car, blah, 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 blah. There's no short version other than I'm building a cyberpunk car. And I'll be honest, I've only got the vaguest idea myself. This is an idea that has been percolating in my head for a while, but it's more conceptual than details. And so I'm going to give it to you the best I can. Basically, I love the whole cyberpunk aesthetic. The uh, best way to describe cyberpunk that I've ever seen was high-tech, low-life. Um, future, high technology, you know, lots of cool gadgets, cybernetic limbs, futuristic everything, but it tends to focus on the poor, the left behind, not the people in power, the people that they're trying to step on. So high-tech, low-life. And the aesthetic of it is, I think, just really interesting. You've got all sorts of advancements in technology, but you've also got just grime and wear and, you know, the people in the world has been beat down. So that's the very, very rough aesthetic. In, in the context of the vehicle specifically, what I want is to build something that has existed in that world for an extended period of time. Um, and carries the narrative and scars of that. So I started with the Cube because it's a weird vehicle. One of the things I love aesthetically that you almost never see in cars, but it's something that I'm all about, is asymmetry. I love asymmetry in car design. I find it fascinating because almost all car design assumes symmetry. So the Cube's interesting in that way because the whole back half of it is asymmetrical. But I want to take that further. Uh, there's a video game out there that I'm sure anybody who knows Cyberpunk knows. It's Cyberpunk 2077. It's based on a role-playing game. And they nailed the aesthetic of cars that I like. They've just, it's like you could not have done a better job if you'd gone to me and said, hey, what do you think constitutes really amazing car design in a cyberpunk sort of world? The vehicles are, none of them except for one Porsche are based on actual real, real vehicles. Everything else is completely made up. When they designed them, they had a narrative behind it. The people who designed them didn't just start making cars. They thought through what different car manufacturers might be in the, that world, what they might make. You know, are they, do they make expensive cars? Do they make cheap cars? Are they foreign? Are they domestic? That kind of thing, to the point where like one of the, the fake brands in it, their description of it is an American car company that makes luxury vehicles but struggles with build quality. Like, mmm, that's so crunchy, I love it. And within that design, there's one of the big things that they really worked with to make the cars look strange, make them look like they're from another you know, universe, is that asymmetry. Uh, so few of the vehicles in that game have a normal symmetry. A lot of them are like really wildly different. Different taillights on both sides, different headlights, different body shapes even, stuff like that. And then in addition to that, there's a whole narrative through there of time and advancement in technology and how that affects things because you've got new technology that's come out. Self-driving cars, LiDAR, radar instead of mirror, just things like that. And all the newest cars in the game, the most recently made ones, 
all that's beautifully integrated. The cars are nice and smooth. And the older the cars get, the more that stuff is just kind of glommed on how and where you could. And therefore, the more the, it's just crudely added on. You've got things mounted where they could be, things screwed to the roof, bolted to the body, cables run through to power things. And then in addition to that, there's a whole category of cars that the only way I can describe them is worn cars that are cars that have sh really suffered in their time in the, the world. So a lot of these will have mismatched body panels, they'll have rust or bad paint, and a lot of them will have had the plastic bumpers removed and like tube welded bumpers installed in their place as a protection against, you know, people backing into it when you're parking or stuff like that. And that aesthetic looks really cool. And then on top of it, they use those bumpers as places to mount additional equipment and those sensors and things like that. It's just, it's a beautiful aesthetic. I think it's just amazingly well designed. The, the level of detail is truly astounding. So I'm not building a replica of a vehicle from that game, but my aesthetic is going to borrow very heavily from that because it just, like I said, they nailed it so cool. So yeah, what I'm going to be building is that sort of vehicle, a vehicle that's just had a rough life, it's lived in this world, been through a series of owners who've all done the things they either needed to do to keep it on the road or the things to make it do what they wanted it to do. And yeah, that's where we're going to be going from there. The aesthetic and the narrative may develop over time, but what I don't want to do is just build a like fully fleshed out, perfect, this is my cyberpunk vehicle, like it was, they rolled it into the garage, did all the modifications and rolled it back out of the garage, done. I want this thing to look like it was done over a long period of time. Like, you know, something broke and they fixed it. Some new piece of technology came out that they wanted or needed to add to it. So they figured out how to make that work. It got in an accident and that was fit. You know, just, it's been bumped and scraped and that, like, that's what I want is I want a car that's aesthetic, the way it looks happened over time happened through intentional decisions, happened through lack of another option, happened through accidents, literal or figurative. That's where I want to go with this. So that's the journey we're going on. I hope you're going to follow along with me. There's going to be another video on this very soon. I'm actually driving to go buy supplies to start the first leg of this. So I hope you come along with me. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope this all comes out well because I'm about to ruin the resale value on this thing completely. Thank you all for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.